Hey everyone, welcome back to Signal Processing with Paul, and today we're going to talk about time invariant systems. A time invariant system is a system where the output of the system does not depend on when the input is placed into it. Now this doesn't mean that the output of the system is constant or doesn't change with time. It can still change as the input to the system changes. Rather, it means that the input-output relationship of the system does not depend on time. Here's an example. Suppose I have a system H, and I know that if I put X into my system H at some time T1, I'll get some output Y. If H is time invariant, I can be confident that if I then put X into my system at a later time, say T2 or an earlier time or whatever, I'll see the same Y. The input-output dynamics don't just change because the time itself is different. In other words, knowing how the system behaves for an input at one time tells you how it will behave for that same input any other time, including the future or the past. This makes analyzing systems easy because we can apply what we learn from looking at the system at one point in time to many or any others. Many things in the real world are either time invariant or are just assumed to be time invariant. If I put a hot pocket in my microwave today for two minutes and I get a hot, hot pocket out, I expect that if I repeat this process tomorrow, I'll get the same result. Notice how the instructions here says the cooking time is two minutes for one sandwich, not two minutes until August 31st, 2026, and then it'll take three minutes and 10 seconds after. It doesn't take longer in the microwave tomorrow, nor does it sort of magically turn into something different. Time invariance is often a useful property for systems to have because it means we can apply observations we make from a system to other situations we have not observed. So whether I put in this hot pocket today or tomorrow, get the same result. There are examples of systems, however, that are not time invariant. Consider a system that takes in the name of a restaurant and outputs whether the restaurant is currently open. This system depends on the time we put in the name of the restaurant, so it is time varying. So you have the same input with different outputs. So here's an example. Suppose I put in Chick-fil-A and I ask on Friday at 5 p.m., is Chick-fil-A open? And the answer is yes, the system will return yes. But if I ask this question at Sunday at 5 p.m., the answer will be no. However, in some cases, you can actually transform a time-varying system into a time-invariant one. For this example, we could modify the system so that it takes both the name of the restaurant and a time TC to check, and as a result, the system will output whether that restaurant is open at the given time TC. In this case, the actual time you put in the name of the restaurant and TC into your system doesn't affect the output because the output is decoupled from the actual time variable T. So as an example, if I put in Chick-fil-A and for TC 5 p.m. Sunday, and I ask this question at 5 p.m. on Friday, the answer will be no. So this doesn't change if I put the same inputs into the system at another time. I can ask it on Sunday at 5 p.m. and the answer is still going to be no. The point here is that time invariance has to do with the behavior of the system, which in this case we've decoupled from time by making it an independent variable of the system. We can write the definition of a time invariant system formally and concisely by saying a system H is said to be time invariant if for all tau, H of X of T equals Y of T implies that H of X of T minus tau equals Y of T minus tau. Now let's break this down and hopefully make this a little easier to understand. The first thing this is telling us is that we have some system H in question, and we have an input-output relationship, which is basically the part of us saying that Y of T equals H of X of T. And then what's kind of like saying is for any possible time shift tau, tau is going to represent our time shift, knowing this input-output relationship tells us if we shift the input by tau, then we will see the same output that we saw before also shifted by tau. And that's that Y of T minus tau. Now, one question you may be asking is, why do we see this shift in both places? Well, for the input-output relationship to be maintained, shifting one must imply shifting of the other. Remember that X and Y are both functions of time, so the time offset between them needs to remain the same if we delay them. So if we delay one, we need to delay the other to maintain the relative time offset between the input and output. So here's a concrete example. Let X of T represent the signal of me putting in a quarter to a gumball machine at 2 p.m. And H in this case is the gumball machine or putting the quarter in and twisting the thing. X of T is not going to show anything until T equals 2 o'clock p.m. where it's going to jump up to indicate me putting the quarter in. And let Y of T represent me getting a gumball from the machine. This is also going to be zero until T equals 2 p.m. Now consider X of T minus 1. 
This is not going to show any action until 3 p.m. because it's shifting the signal that had action at 2 p.m. one unit to the right or later. So it actually needs to be 3 p.m. until x of t minus 1 shows me putting in the quarter. And likewise, if I put the quarter in at 3 p.m., I would expect to see the gumball at this time as well. So in other words, if I put a quarter in at some time, 2 p.m., and get a gumball at that time, then if I put a quarter in at a different time, I will get the gumball out at that same time time that I put the quarter in. That's why they both need to shift. Now be careful here not to get confused about time delays and shifts. Remember that x of t represents a signal, and x of t minus tau represents the same signal, just tau time units later. So in our t plane here, to the left is the past and to the right is the future. Often t equals zero is kind of like the now part. So when we represent things this way, time is like moving from left to right, or you can think of it equivalently as things are moving from the right to the left. So x of t minus one is a time delay because I have to wait one additional unit to observe whatever I see in x of t without the time delay currently, right? So whatever's happening at t equals zero in x of t, I have to wait t equals one to happen in x of t minus one. And whatever's happening at x of two, I need to wait until x of three in x of t minus one. So that's when the two functions are equal. And this is why a time delay is a shift to the right into the future. It's gonna happen later. Now to prove a system is time invariant, all you need to do is look at the definition. You take some system h and you assume you have some input output relation. This is the h of x of t equals y of t part. You let your tau be arbitrary and you show that this implies that h of x of t minus tau equals y of t minus tau. Now you need to show this for all x, y, and tau and this is why you need to let x, y, and tau be variables. You, need, you can't specify what they are. They need to be general so that you can show that this holds for all possible signals and all possible time shifts. And you basically do this by using the algebra, using what you have before, right? H of x of t equals y of t, and then putting in h of x of t and using the manipulations that you have from the system to show that this equals y of t minus tau. To show that a system V is time varying, all you need to do is find a specific x, y, and t star where if you know that y of t equals v of x of t, then it's not the case that y of t minus tau equals v of x of t minus tau. So what you're doing is finding a specific counterexample or a specific time in which things were different. This is what we did for the Chick-fil-A example earlier, where we had the is open now function. We just provided two inputs, one that was shifted by a different amount, and then the answer wasn't shifted. The answer wasn't even a function of time. So that explains why we got different answers. Now, the assumption of time invariance is often a good one to make. Scottish philosopher David Hume once described the principle of uniformity of nature, which is that we must assume, quote, that instances of which we have had no experience must resemble those of which we have had experience, and that the course of nature continues almost uniformly the same. What is true of nature is often true about systems as well. We often assume how it behaves at one time explains how it has behaved or will behave, at least without any additional information. Now, when we have this additional evidence, then that could be a good reason to update our belief or assumption about time invariance, which was famously noted by Reverend Thomas Bayes. Now, Bayes seems to be explicitly responding to David Hume's point on this when he described his famous Bayes theorem, but that's a topic for another video. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.